Hey everyone, how's it going? So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about what I think are the top 10 most useless abilities in all of Pokemon. Now before I begin, there's just a couple things I want to say. First off, I'm not talking about abilities that were intentionally designed to be bad, to balance out the Pokemon that had them. So Slow Start or True Int or Defeatist were meant to balance out, you know, Archeops and Regigigas, etc. So I'm not really considering it in slacking. So I'm not considering them for this list. The other thing I want to mention is I considered their usefulness in all areas of the game. So something like Healer is useless in a single battle, but can be quite useful in a double battle. And Pickup, while useless in battle, is pretty good out of battle, and in fact was like the best way to get leftovers prior to Generation 7. So having said that, I'm going to be looking at 10 abilities that, although might have some use, in some cases they're either too situational or are just downright terrible. So let's get started. Leading off at number 10, we have Zagard's old ability, Aura Break. I guess you could still have an Aura Break Zagard, but why would you? Aura Break essentially reverses the effects of the abilities of Xerneas and Evil Tall, Fairy Aura and Dark Aura respectively. Now, in English what that means is this ability only has any use if used against an Xerneas or Evil Tall. Otherwise, it is completely useless. Okay, but like, if you're facing any other Pokemon the entire game, it's basically like Zagard has no ability. And because of its such situational usage, I have no hesitation putting it here at number 10. Moving on to number 9, we have an ability actually introduced in Generation 3, and that's Runaway. So Runaway does nothing outside a battle, does nothing inside a trainer battle, but in a wild battle, it will allow you to escape automatically. You know what else allows you to do that most of the time? Hitting the run button. And yeah, that is determined based on your speed. So what if you have a Pokemon at a much lower level? Well, good news. There's an item that you can hold that will never be used up called a smoke ball. It's really easy to get and it does the exact same thing. Moving on to number eight, we have Surge Surfer, which is a Lolan Raichu signature ability. Now, not only is Surge Surfer super situational, say that 10 times fast, but it doesn't really help Alolan Raichu all that much. So what it does is that when the battlefield is under the effects of electric terrain, Surge Surfer will double the speed of all Pokemon with this ability. This would be really useful if it was a Pokemon like Magnezone, which had, you know, not very good speed, <clears throat> but Raichu has excellent speed. In fact, one of the best in the entire game. Its base 110 puts it within the top 10 to 20% of all Pokemon. So speed is not your issue. If this doubled its defense, kind of like Grass Pelt, which is for grassy terrain, that would be great. But Raichu doesn't really need a speed boost. I'm sorry, I don't see why I would want my Raichu to have this ability. Especially when regular Raichu gets Lightning Rod, and Lightning Rod's far more useful. Heck, Static is way more useful. Moving on to number 7, we have Big Pex. So Big Peck's also pretty situational, and I can't think of many times I'd really want to have this ability. What it does is that it doesn't allow your Pokemon to have its defense stat stage lowered by another Pokemon. You can still lower your own defense, like a move like Shell Smash or um, Super Power. Those will still lower your defense, but another Pokemon can't use a move like Leer or Screech. But, you know, if you've done any competitive battles, how often do you see those moves being used? Or those moves like Acid or Rock Smash. Never. I never see those moves ever being used. And that's really why it's on the list. Um, it doesn't do anything outside of battle. And there are just better abilities to put on pretty much every single Pokemon that could get this ability. There's a better ability to use. Alright, number 6, we have both plus and minus. So this was introduced in Gen 3 to kind of show off double battles. And they were the abilities for Plusl and Minin. But they've stuck around, and they've actually been modified a little bit. So it used to be that in a double battle, if a Pokemon with plus and a Pokemon with minus were on the field at the same time, they would both get a 50% boost in special attack. Now, it's the same thing, except you can have two pluses and two minuses. That works too. Alright, that's fine, but like, let's look at what Pokemon we're realistically talking about. So you're talking about regular Ampharos, Plusle, Clinklink, and Dedeny for plus. And for Minus, you're talking about Minin, Manectric, and Clinklang. Why would you ever want to use those Pokemon together on the field at the same time? Like, you're just begging your opponent, like, please, please use Earthquake. If there were Pokemon of all different types of this ability, it would be more useful. 
But the fact is, it's just electric and one steel type that can learn this ability, and they're all weak to ground. At number 5, we have Magma Armor. In battle, Magma Armor prevents the Pokémon from being frozen. Which Pokémon are we talking about here? Slugma, Macargo, and Camerupt. Why would you ever use this ability? So yes, outside of battle, it is useful. It can be used to double the hatching time of Pokémon. You know what else does that? Flame Body, an ability that when you make contact with the Pokémon, has a 30% chance to burn you. That's a useful ability. Why would you ever want Magma Armor? I mean, who's using Ice Moves against Fire Pokémon? I mean, I guess Camerupt, possibly, but like, this is so situational, and it's not like freezing is very common, it's at most a 10% chance. I don't really need an ability to lessen that 10% chance that someone's going to use an Ice Pokémon or an Ice Move against my Fire Pokémon. At number 4, we have an ability so powerful, Game Freak keeps it exclusively obtainable via hidden ability. How many times has this happened to you? You have your Caesar, or your Metagross, or your Registeel out on the field, and your opponent dares to challenge you with a Grass Nod, or worse, a low kick, and you're like, oh no! If only my Pokemon weighed less, it would take less damage from these moves, even though Grass Knot isn't very effective, and Low Kick really is only a threat to Registeel, who has pretty good defense. But don't worry, because with Light Metal, you'll take half the damage. So that Grass Knot used against your Scizor, instead of doing 4 damage, will do 2. And that Low Kick will do less damage to your Registeel. Of course, if someone uses Heat Crash or Heavy Slam, you're going to take more damage, but you know, you win some, you lose some. Now, at number 3, if you thought Light Metal was useless, take a look at Honey Gather. Honey Gather does nothing in battle, and outside of battle, it allows you a chance to get honey, kind of like pickup. But here's the thing, you can buy honey, and honey doesn't really do anything useful anyway. So, what did honey do? Well... It was very useful in Gen 4 to get Tree Munchlax, which was definitely not omitted from my last Top 10 video. Definitely not. Um, <laughs> joking aside, you know, that was when it was kind of useful. Of course, you could just buy honey in that game. In Gen 6, it automatically started a Horde Encounter, if that were possible. Of course, Sweet Scent did that. And in Gen 7, it pretty much is completely useless. Like, it starts with just a random encounter. Hooray. So, while these first eight abilities are just kind of useless, these last two actively are terrible, not in a balancing out kind of way, in a what were they thinking kind of way. For number two, we have Klutz. Klutz prevents the effects of the held item of the Pokemon with this ability. It makes it so you can't use items. Neato. By the way, if you thought, oh, I could give my Pokemon an Iron Ball. Nope. The speed drop from Iron Ball is not negated by Klutz. But don't worry, Soothe Bell, Everstone, and, like, your power items still work. Wh why is this a thing? I, I, I can't even understand. So, basically, you're telling me the Pokémon with this ability can't really use items. Which Pokémon get this? Well, Baneri and Lopunny were the Pokémon that, you know, started this nightmare. Wubat and Swubat and, and Audino got it as a hidden ability. Golit and Golurk and Stuffle and Beware. Like, I can't understand. Every ability in the game has some use, albeit very limited. This has, in my opinion, no competitive use, no use out of battle. It's just garbage. And finally, number one, we have Stall. Stall is such a great ability, they decided that only one Pokemon would be allowed to get it. What does Stall do? There's a whole paragraph to explain it, but... Stall causes the Pokemon with this ability to move last within its priority bracket. But, increased priority moves will always go first, whether or not the Pokemon has Stall. If another Pokemon uses a decreased priority move, it will go after the Pokemon with Stall. What? Like, why is this a thing? Why, why is this a thing? Who invented this? By the way, the Pokemon that gets its Sableye, it also gets Prankster. But, like, uh, no, why does this exist? What use does this have? I don't want to go last. Like, if the use for stall was that, oh, well, moves like counter and mirror coat don't work because you'll always go last, okay, I kind of get it. But no, no, stall only decreases your priority by enough so that you always go last normally, but dragon tail and whatever, they still work like normal on you. 
So it's the worst of both worlds. And there you have it. Those are, in my opinion, the top 10 most useless abilities in all of Pokemon. Um, if you can come up with a strategy to make some of these viable, please let me know in the comment section below. I would love to see how you could use Stall or Klutz. Um, are there any abilities I forgot? Let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.